Alright, let's move forward. Expat. So these are the set of topics we are going to cover. So expat, what is an expat? Expat is expression language, meaning XML language, for referencing particular parts of XML document. Okay, so you can use expat with any XML document, okay, including XML schema, of course. So examples that can be expressed with XPath. So if you want to reference the first person element in an XML document, or if you want to reference seventh child element of the third person element, or if you want to refer if you want to make a reference to ID attribute of the first person element whose content is the string Java Passion class or all XML style sheet processing instructions. So basically, X, you use XPath for referencing any parts of your XML document. Okay, So these are just a very simple examples where XPath could be used for referencing. OK, so XPath expression criteria. So you can actually use position, relative position, type, content, numbers, strings, booleans, and functions. So we are going to cover most of this. Now. The places, example places where you are going to use XPath could be XSLT style sheet. So that's something that we are going to cover as the next topic after this. So inside XSLT style sheet, uh, you are going to use what is called the match and select to make a references to your XML document. Uh, you use XPath when you're defining X pointer as well to identify a particular point in or part of XML document that an X link links to. Okay, so these are two examples where XPath is used. All right, so we are going to do uh, exercise one and seven. Uh, exercise one is we are going to actually use uh, XPath checker plugin to Firefox. Uh, the uh, um, I could not actually I, I I didn't actually time to find the compatible plugin for Chrome. Uh, so in this case, I have to ask you guys to use Firefox uh, to install this XPath checker. And exercise 7 is display XPath of a selected element. So let's take a look at uh, lab documentation. So exercise one is install XPath Checker uh, plugin to your Firefox browser. So if you are not in, if you have not installed Firefox, I have to ask you guys to install Firefox first and then install this plugin. Okay. And uh, exercise seven is display XPath notation of a selected item in an HTML page. So let's actually go to exercise one. Uh, so uh, you know you can actually go to you can just search for uh, you can just go to Firefox and uh, you can go to tools and uh, the uh, tools add-ons and uh, you can search for XPath checker uh, you can just type XPath. Like this, and uh, then uh, in my case, you know, I have already installed XPath. Uh, what is XPath? Let's, let's try. If you search XPath, yeah, here you go, XPath Checker. Okay, uh, and uh, once you install it, in my case, I have installed it. Okay, then uh, you should be able to use the rest of the uh, exercises. Uh, so that's exercise one, just installing that plugin. And exercise seven is uh, you can find out. You can go to any website. You can go to, for example, like a Google or Yahoo.com or JavaPassion.com. You can select any element, and you can actually see uh, once you install the XPath uh, the uh, checker, you know, then you are going to see uh, view uh, XPath, uh, okay, and then you can actually see XPath notation of it, okay. 
so you can just select anything in this case I'm gonna just choose this guy okay and then I'm going to see view X path and this is the notation of uh, this particular you know the element okay so uh, that's the exercise I'm gonna ask you to do uh, I'm going to give you guys about uh, why don't I actually move forward okay so that I am gonna actually finish up some presentation and uh, hopefully you guys can actually do these exercises uh, in, you know during lunch time uh, the, uh, if you have to okay so I'm gonna actually present uh, until 1230 okay alright next topic is uh, node type okay Uh, so XML document is made of a tree of nodes and uh, there are seven kinds of nodes the root node and element nodes text nodes attribute nodes and comment nodes and processing instruction nodes and namespace nodes so root node uh, is not the same as root element okay so root node basically covers everything including root element processing instructions and comment Okay, root element is the first element inside your XML document, but uh, the uh, root node is reflecting the complete XML document. Okay, root element is the uh, first root element inside the XML uh, document. Okay, so it contains entire document including uh, root element, processing instruction, and comment. Okay, uh, expression result data types. So when you're using XPath expression, it gets evaluated into one of these four types. Uh, node set, boolean, number, and string. And uh, the most important uh, type we are going to deal with is a node set. Okay, so as you probably have guessed, node set is a set of nodes. Okay, so we are going to learn what a node set is all about. So node set is a collection of zero or more nodes from an XML document. Okay? So after your XPath expression is evaluated, it will return uh, one of those four types and uh, one of those four types, the most popular uh, type is, uh, return type is a node set and is a collection of zero or more nodes. Okay? and uh, the uh, is returned from location path expression so what it means is the x path expression is what sometimes called the location path expression okay uh, now this node set uh, there are certain things that cannot be in the node set for example c data sections entity references and document type declarations uh, these things are actually resolved okay uh, the uh, so uh, uh, you know, because XPath operates on an XML document after these items are resolved. Okay, so by the time uh, the XPath evaluation uh, is uh, expression is evaluated, there are no no C data and entity references and like this. Okay. All right, uh, we are going to play around with XPath expression using an example. XML file, and this is XML file called the people.xml. Okay, and we are going to use this people.xml uh, document instance uh, to exercise uh, XPath expressions. It's pretty straightforward. So you know you can see this is XML and it has a style sheet and is a doc type. And then what's important is this people element. So people is a root element. The whole thing is root node, and the root element is people. And people have two person element, the first person and second person and person element has a uh, few attributes born, died, and ID and then it has uh, name, child attribute, uh, name, child element and then it has uh, three professional, uh, three profession in this case, child element and it has a home page element and the name child element has its own child element called the uh, first name and last name okay? and then we have a second person whose name is uh, Richard and uh, in this case the name has three child element first name middle initial and last name and this one has a single profession and it has a hobby okay so this is the example XML document instance called uh, people.xml uh, we are going to uh, play against uh, the uh, you know uh, the X, you know we are going to uh, play XPath expression against this particular target XML document instance file. Okay, so let's move on to the concept of location path. Okay, 
So a node set is returned by location path expression. So when we say uh, x path expression, we are typically talking about location path expression. Okay. Uh, location path is made of location steps. Okay, so we are, we are going to see example of this one in the following slide. Okay, location step contains an axis and node test separated by double colon. So it could have an axis and node test, but in general, you know, this axis is omitted. So we are not going to actually deal with this particular axis uh, example at all. Okay. Uh, so location step could be uh, specified in abbreviated form. So this is basically what we are going to deal with. We are not going to actually deal with the axis. Uh, or it could be unabbreviated form. So in this case, axis is specified. Okay. Again, we are going to mostly focus on uh, the abbreviated form where we don't specify axis. All right. So location path can include root, element, attribute, comment, text, processing instruction, and wildcard, multiple matches with this vertical, and compound location path. So we're going to actually look into each of these in a bit more detail. Okay, so root location path selects the document root node. So that is basically slash. Okay, and it's represented by slash. Again, this is actually root node, not root element. Okay, uh, now absolute location regardless of where the context node is. So we're going to actually learn the concept of context node in a few minutes. Alright, so here this is the case. We are referencing uh, the, uh, the uh, 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 in fact in this case is a root element. Okay, So slash, just a slash is root node and slash people in this case is referencing root element. Okay. So basically what it does is, is uh, reflecting, I want to get all people elements, all immediate people element from the root. Okay, so in this case we have only one. Right? Okay. Uh, so the, uh, uh, the, as we move on, I'm gonna, yeah, so why don't you actually, um, I'm going to show you how to use this XPath checker in the hands-on lab. That's basically exercise um, one. So what we are going to do is uh, from the Firefox, we are going to open the file. So here, uh, from your Firefox, uh, Firefox uh, open the file. So people.xml file is provided under the hands-on lab. So you go to hands-on lab. Uh, in this case is uh, the uh, WSXML XPath and the samples. So underneath you see people, okay, XML file and open it. So this is the XML, target XML document instance we are going to play around, okay. So right now you open it, okay, we just did it, okay, and then we are going to view XPath. Uh, the, uh, so here the 2.1 is basically what we just did. So here, right click it and uh, view XPath. Okay, all right, and then you can specify anything you want. So in this case, we are going to say people. Okay, now once you, you know, the uh, press return, it will select, it says one match found. So basically, it returned this people element, people node. Okay. So that's basically what I just uh, the, uh, did, okay, and uh, that's the result I'm capturing right here, okay. So what it means is that get all immediate immediate child people nodes under the root, okay. Because we have only one people, uh, you know, it will just display one match, okay. Uh, the child element location step. So expression is a child element name and it basically selects all child elements with a specified name of the context node. In this case the context node is the root. Okay. Uh, now the concept of context node is in XSLT. Again we are going to actually take a look at the concept of actually context node in XSLT uh, later on. So you know don't worry about it. I mean, basically uh, the uh, you know the uh, uh, there is a concept of this context node. Okay, now in this case we are going to get uh, 
second profession of person element on the people. So what it means is that I want the XPath to evaluate this expression and what it means find all people element there is only one people element right and on the people element that is a context node find all person element okay and then among the all person element try to find the second profession okay so in this case uh, it's going to return so again we are going to try uh, people person and then profession like this. So if you say profession then it will return four because there are four cases right but I want to just have only the second one okay so in this case it will just return uh, one because only the first person has uh, the uh, second profession the second person has only a single profession okay alright and next one is attribute location steps so you can specify attribute attribute you would using at attribute name okay so in this case uh, and other location steps uh, so if you want to actually make a reference to attribute then you're going to use the at sign if you want to uh, now these are examples of other location steps so text node if you want to get the text then you're going to use a text parenthesis so what it means is that select all immediate text nodes of a context node uh, this one get all processing instruction this one get all comment nodes this one when you say slash slash that means all XYZ node under the root so it doesn't have to be immediate so if you have if you have a single slash that means immediate child nodes only but if you have a slash slash that means all child node under that okay so in this case if you say first name first name then we are going to have all first name cases right okay and now if you want to get the text so this is the case that it returns a first name element now you want to get just text so here you are going to say text like this and then it will just return only the text okay this is a comment so replace each so this is an example so you know this is XSLT so uh, don't worry about this disinsect that much but what you want to do but what you want to do sometimes is that I want to search for all comments and then I want to replace that comment with this like comment deleted right so this is XSLT uh, notation uh, where you want to find all so this is the XPath notation XPath expression find all comment okay and then uh, replace with this. That's what it meant. Okay. All right. So right now is 11:30. So I am going to ask you guys to try these exercises one and seven, and also if you want to do exercise one, which is basically doing uh, up to this point. Okay. Uh, that should be good. So I'm going to give you guys 10 minutes to this exercise, and we'll have 30 minutes lunch time. So we will be back in 40 minutes which is uh, the uh, 10 minutes after 1 okay uh, next topic is wild cards so you can use wild cards uh, when you specify your uh, expat uh, expression so just like the concept of wild cards in other programming languages it matches different elements and node types at the same time so there are three different kinds of wild cards you can use one is node uh, and the other one is a star and the third one is at star okay so let's take a look at each of this in a bit more detail so node is a node function matches all nodes including everything so element text attribute processing instruction namespace comment everything okay uh, the star however matches only element node uh, regardless of the type so it doesn't match attributes it doesn't match text nodes it doesn't match comments it doesn't match pro uh, processing instructions uh, and the uh, at star matches all attribute nodes 
Okay, so you can see uh, node is on the top uh, is the broadest. Uh, it covers uh, everything. Uh, star just covers element, and at star covers just at attribute nodes. So in this case, uh, you know when you use um, uh, this one. So here we are going to use, we want to get all the elements, okay? So in this case, uh, it will just collect all the elements, people, name, profession, first name, and everything. So we have how many? Uh, we have uh, 15, okay? However, if you use node, then it should be... Uh, It should uh, just one match found. Ah, that's interesting. I expected a lot more, so let's see. Oh, oh, I see. So I should actually say this, like this. Then it includes even uh, the uh, the uh, blank spaces. Okay, so it does have. Uh, it returns uh, 44 uh, the uh, node in the node set. Okay. And uh, here, uh, I want to collect. I want to collect all the uh, attribute star, and uh, there are four matches. And uh, multiple matches. Let me just go. Okay, so you can use O operation. Uh, the um, so example, so profession or hobby, or first name, last name, profession or hobby, or this one, ID attribute and X link and type attribute, and uh, this is all elements and all attributes. Okay, so in this case, uh, I want to have all professions and all hobbies. Okay, so here let's try this profession and star and uh, all hobby oh why we turn just one oh I have misspelled s here okay all right, so now it turns uh, five, so four profession and one hobby. Okay. Uh, now compound location paths. So compound location path uh, basically combina combination of uh, multiple location step with a forward slash. As a default, it's going down the hierarchy from the match node to other nodes. Okay, so this is actually default axis downward. Okay, uh, dot refers to current node. You can use the dot dot refers to parent node, just like in file system, and uh, slash slash refers to descendants of uh, context node. Okay, uh, so all descendant, not just immediate descendant. So here uh, we want to get uh, the all peoples, all persons, all names, and all first name. Okay. So here, uh, let's try this. We get all people. There, there is only one, right? And then we get all person. Here we have two person elements returned, and then we want to get all name. Okay. Then we have a two. And then we say first name. Okay. Then we have uh, two cases, and uh, and uh, that is first name case. Oh, now if I want to get the text nodes of these first names, then as expected, this is what we have seen before as well. We are getting just Ellen and Richard. Okay.
Okay, so here we are using this dot dot notation. Okay, and uh, this dot dot notation uh, is uh, used to refer parent. Okay, so let's try. Uh, middle initial there is only one case right and then we go dot dot goes to the name element and then we get first name okay now we get the first name okay uh, first name and current node so this is so we say first name okay this is the same thing as this because this is a current node okay so you know this is the same thing as this same result okay so exercise 2 uh, perform various X path operation so I'm going to give you guys seven minutes to finish exercise 2 okay so some of you guys already have done this one uh, so uh, uh, next concept we are going to learn is predicates. So predicates are used to select a subset from a node set. Okay, and uh, it can be applied in each of the location step in the location path. Okay, uh, and boolean expression applied to each node in the node set. So let's see examples of predicates. So in this case. Uh, it's a value comparison, so we like to actually find all profession whose value is physicist. Okay, so uh, period stands for string value of the current node, um, so it's like XSL value of. Okay, and uh, you can use single code and double code. Uh, either one is fine. So here, let's try to find and. Uh, profession and uh, string value equal and uh, fidget this and uh, we should uh, did it work? okay so I'm not sure it worked or not yeah so here it go so we should have uh, one profession and uh, if we just yeah, that looks good to me press enter didn't work oh looks like almost like this is actually crashed okay so let me just start it again I have to open the file. Let's open the file and uh, expat samples people and uh, then view expat. Okay, all right, so that is good. So let's try profession dot equal. Oh, no. Oh, can be spelled, I guess. F H Y S I SIST. I think I spelled correctly. Oh, I have technically have a double here. Okay, so it returns. Okay. Alright, so that worked. Now, this is an example where uh, the uh, find person element that have a profession child element uh, with the value of fidget. Okay, so in this case, uh, the, and this is the case, find the person element whose ID attribute is P4567. 
Okay, so instead of dot, we are using child element of person, and this is the ID attribute. Okay, so that should actually return uh, person, uh, and uh, yeah, so it should actually return person element. In this case, profession is fidget. Okay, so I'm gonna actually let you do this exercise later on yourself and uh, we can use relational operators so all relational operators that we can, we can use uh, like this and here uh, we like to find all person elements whose uh, born attribute numeric value is less than or equal to 1915 okay so it should return uh, one person okay you can use uh, and or inside the predicate. Okay, so here uh, I like to find all person elements whose born attributes values are between 1915 and 1920 inclusive, and this is or case, whether uh, first name is Dick or first name is Sang. Okay, so it should return uh, one match and uh, you can also have non-boolean expressions so predicates could be non-boolean expressions and they will be converted into boolean okay so if you're using number uh, it will actually use tr it will return true if it is not zero okay for node set uh, it will return true if node set is non-empty uh, for the case of string type uh, it will return true if non-empty string uh, if you know it is non-empty string Okay, so let's see an example of this. So in this case, uh, the uh, uh, name middle initial. So the uh, name elements which have middle initial child element. Okay. So in this case, should return just one match. So what happens is that middle initial is a node set, right? So it will return, you know, the, uh, the, uh, 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 wait a minute. Yeah, okay, so this is the predicate when it's actually being used, in this case, as a node set. Uh, middle initial node set, there is only one, right? Okay, so it will actually return name element that contains middle initial. and can be applied to each step in a location path as we have seen before so in this case we have predicates for this location path as well as this location path so we are looking so select all people child elements okay we have only one people element and then select all person element whose born attribute has a value numerically less than 1950 and then select all name attribute uh, name elements which have a first name child element uh, whose value is Ellen. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, in previous case, I think I'm not sure I actually explained correctly. So this case is uh, the uh, when middle initial is present, uh, that is actually predicate evaluation. Okay, so middle initial is present or not. So in this case, the only name that has a middle initial is present is the first person. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully that uh, that's the way I I explained it. Okay, so that is this, uh, it should be return this result. And uh, exercise three. So I'm going to let you guys to do this exercise uh, maybe seven minutes. Okay, non-node set expressions. So, uh, you know, there are four different uh, type of returns, node set and numbers, string and booleans, right? Okay, so these are numbers and these are strings and these are uh, booleans okay uh, and they cannot be used in match, ex match pattern of XSL template again we are going to talk about uh, this is XSLT stuff so don't worry about this statement I should actually remove all XSLT uh, reference in this presentation because that causes more confusion <laughs> rather than helping okay so you know basically just focus on numbers and strings and uh, booleans okay and uh, for numbers, you can certainly do arithmetic operations. Okay, so again, this is an example of XSLT. Okay, so in this case, uh, you know, XSLT is using a select attribute. This is the uh, expression, uh, numeric number expression. So if you do, you know, here, uh, six plus seven, something like that, then it will return values like this. Okay, 
uh, and the uh, string values is uh, j passion then you should return j passion nothing fancy and the uh, for boolean if I say true it will return true okay and uh, if I say one is less than two it should return true if I say two is less than one then it should fall return false okay okay uh, strings. Uh, strings is ordered sequence of Unicode characters and it works with uh, equal and not equal comparison operators. Okay. Now functions. So functions return a value of one of these four types as we you know talked about node set, boolean, number, and string. Okay. So these are the set of uh, node set functions like a position. Okay, so again, this is XSLT, uh, the, uh, the uh, expression. So what's important is this is X path notation, position. Okay, uh, so position, uh, current nodes position in the node set. And the count is number of nodes in the node set argument. Okay, so if I, let's see an example of this. So if I say count, and I want to find all person, like this and it should return two. Okay. If I say name, it should turn two. Oh, I should return two. So if I say profession, then it should return four, right? And if I say hobby, then it should return one. Okay. As expected. String functions. String functions convert any type of argument to a string. So in a booleans, uh, we'll actually return true or false. And what gets displayed is the uh, string values, right? Uh, node set. Yeah, this is actually important. Node set. When you say string, when you're using string function against the node set, it will return string value of the first node in the node set. Okay. So let's see. We have an example of that. Uh, looks like yeah here we go so yeah we are going to try this one later on but we'll try this okay so let's say uh, in a profession if I say profession there are four right okay now if I say string version of this then it will return the string value of the first node in the set Okay, so profession, you know, just profession slash, slash profession has four in the node set, right? But when you're trying to get the string value of it, then it will take the first one of it and then will display the first node, uh, the string value of the first node. So same thing with, let's say, uh, name. So let's try name. Okay, so, you know, the uh, if you say name without the string, there is a 2 in the node set, right? Okay. Now, if you want to get the string value of it, by the way, string value of it is the text value of all the subsequent nodes. So that's the reason it will display ln and touring. Okay. So if I say string, like this, okay, ln touring, right? So the same thing with the first name. So if I say first, name like this it will take you know the uh, it will take the uh, the first node in the resulting node set and then it will take a string value of the uh, the first node in the node set okay which is ln uh, starts with uh, argument 1 and argument 2 returns true if the first argument starts with the second argument okay so in this example let's say start with richard and rick returns true okay because rick start with this and this one returns false because uh, you know the uh, this rechart doesn't start with R I C K, okay? So let's try starts with and uh, uh, saying and uh, so I'll say S A. It returns true. If I say A X like this then it should return false. All right. Uh, it contains, returns true if the first argument contains a second argument. Okay. 
and the substring uh, basically returns a substring of argument 1 whose length is the length starting from the position. So in this example uh, the uh, length argument is, by the way, is optional. So in this case you have argument 1, oh yeah, so this is the case you have argument 1 and position and uh, 2 uh, length, okay? Uh, it returns M. Uh, so starting from here and then, you know, it will return 2 to return MM. In this case, uh, it will start from 2 and uh, then all the way to the end. So without the length, it will actually go to the end. So it will return this much from the second. Okay. Uh, substring before returns the substring of the first argument string that precedes the second argument's initial uh, appearances. Okay. So basically, if I say I want to actually get the string uh, before the first instance of this guy in a slash, so it will return mm. Okay. Uh, if I say the uh, D, then it will display mm slash, right? Okay. Uh, substring after is actually reverse of it. Uh, string length, you can you know display the string length. Okay. Returns the length of the string value of the argument. White spaces characters are included and markup characters are not counted. So in this case, argument one is optional. Returns the length of the context node. Okay. So in this case, we want to get the position, uh, the first, uh, the first one of the first name, and then get the string. Okay. And here, string length is going to display four because this ln is uh, four characters. Uh, this is um, what we just talked about. Okay. So I'm going to let you guys try this and uh, normalize spaces. Basically, uh, normalize white space. It will remove all the white spaces, basically. Okay? Yeah, so in this case, uh, when we do, you know, we are going to... Uh, oh, I should actually say the... Uh, string... Let me see. Okay. Uh, normalize space. Yeah, looks like I should. Uh, I should. <laughs> the, the, this one is not correct. Looks like. Okay. So I'm going to say. Let's actually try string. Mm, slash slash name. And we're gonna use a position. Function. Okay, so it will return Allen string, and then I'm going to say normal lies space like this. Then it will normalize all the sp spaces, and then, you know, the, for space, it will have just a single space. Okay, so it looks like I need to change slide number 73. 73, I have to fix that. Okay. All right. So that is normalized space. And boolean functions again, true, false, and boolean. Okay. So here uh, it converts argument one to boolean and returns result. If no argument, use the context node. If argument is a node set, true if it contains at least one node set, uh, at least one node in that node set. Okay. So if I say, uh, like. Um, name, then it has the uh, 2 in the node set, right? So if I say boolean, then it should return true, okay? Now if I say name x, then it should return false because there is no uh, node in the result set. There is, no, there is no element that has name with the name x, right? Okay. Uh, number functions. So converts arg1 to number. If no arg exists, use a context node. Uh, and uh, and uh, this is a sum. Take a node set as an argument. Converts each node in the set to a string value. Then converts each of those strings to a number. And finally, it adds the numbers and returns the result. Okay. So basically, sum. So here, you know, typically you're going to use sum for the numeric value. Okay. So here, I like to actually uh, sum. Uh, all the uh, the uh, born attribute values, okay. So it's going to we have a uh, two values, right, from two people. Uh, so it's going to be 38, 30. 
uh, exercise five and six. So I'm going to uh, finish up the presentation. So what we covered in this presentation is expat expression data types and the concept of node types, node set, location path, uh, along with the location steps, and wildcards and predicates and functions. Okay. All right, so I'm going to actually ask you guys to do exercise uh, five and six. Uh, I'll give you just five, six minutes to finish this. Okay, and then we're going to move on to XSLT. Okay.